Okay. 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 <laughs> well, I'd say right. that if there's nothing else, Bob, maybe you just want to start with how you got into the art or the arts or something that connected you to Osensei, so maybe we get a couple stories out of it. Ah, old stories. Again? Ah. Okay, that's just if your memory still works. You know. <laughs> okay, it came up the other day. One of my students asked me uh, how I got involved or something. And it seems to me when I was a young boy in high school, I had an, I thought the Orient had some something to offer in terms of awareness that I wasn't getting from the Catholic Church or whoever. And so I had a little interest to uh, uh, to try to get their sense of things. So when judo was offered in my high school. I jumped for it because I wanted that oriental connection to try to pick up their belief systems, their training patterns, and that's as close as I could get to it then. So, uh, uh, so there. Did that come across? That's that's great. How did it move from judo on to the other arts, or? Especially Aikido, and, and I'm also curious about yoga. I really was surprised when I initially, many years ago, but when I first heard that you had studied yoga, it seemed really Yeah. Surprising. Uh, well, uh, again, as I started to quest about more different dimensional or more inner work. Uh, then uh, I uh, picked up a, a book on, on yoga and looking at the pictures, I was doing the postures and right away, almost immediately, I could feel energies moving through my body. And that was a new thing. No one was talking about energies. Uh, but this thing was happening. Uh, so that piqued my interest. And then I knew uh, to try to hook in with somebody who had studied uh, as opposed to a book. And so I started to study with a fellow who was uh, very good, not just yoga, but very good with the meditation. And there weren't any meditation teachers around, believe it or not, in those days. I called Japanese churches. I called Chinese churches. Nobody knew what I was talking about. Uh, but there was this Westerner uh, who was teaching a meditation. So I went to a few classes, and that really started me going with sitting. And uh, then, again, things begin to happen. Things begin to show. So where, where, where are we? So judo, because of the oriental thing, teacher said I took to it like duck to water. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then the... And I would just do things like sit by myself out in the cold, rainy weather, see how long I could stay there, sitting in my bathing suit in the backyard in the storm, uh, just to, just to, just to, you know, I was just trying stuff out. And so that moves to yoga, that moves to meditation. Uh, and so then, of course, I heard about O Sensei eventually. And, uh, uh, friend of mine in junior college from the Orient knew I was a martial artist or a judo guy and he mentioned Aikido which I never heard about so I went looking around wasn't much written about it a line here a line there but nothing really uh, and then I was traveling through San Francisco and there was a guy at a judo school I used to check out judo schools just to check them out uh, and there was a guy teaching an Aikido class, brand new, there's only like two students. I had a feeling there was something there. So I came back home, grabbed my training partners, and the following week, we went back to San Francisco and uh, to check it out. And at this time, he came over and talked to us and started talking about mind, body, harmony and stuff. Well, I was already trying to do that in, in the judo, I knew there was a relationship because when I meditated and then went to judo class, I was, 
I was different. I was better. And I thought, well, what the hell is the relationship between me sitting over here and me being better at judo? What's this? There was a definitely a relationship. I couldn't quite pinpoint what that was. So here's this art that's already talking about mind, body, harmony. Uh, so I went for it. That's about, that's about it. Is that good enough, Richard? You there, Richard? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You're there. I um I just wondered, and then how did that lead to you going to Japan? And and as I remember, you said you didn't actually go there to study Aikido. You're going there to study judo, but I would no, no, no. I, was, I went to study martial arts. Right. Okay. I was going to be top dog and everything. Okay. Because. <laughs> I was already into karate, judo. I had taught a little bit in the Marine Reserve. Uh, I had taught a bit with the police and learned a bit in the police. Uh, I was a martial artist. Would you say then, because I remember some of the stories when you said that you had gone to study everything, but then something happened that changed that. And I think, mm. was it just seeing Osensei, was it just meeting him or? Yeah. You know? yeah. And the people in the art, the Aikido people are very nice. Some of the other folks in the other art weren't as nice. <laughs> uh, it just drew me more and more and more. Um, if there had been no O Sensei, I would have uh, followed the Chinese art because of the amount of energy that they were working with. So if there were no O Sensei, I'd be doing. Tai Chi, Bakwa, Singy, all that stuff. Yeah. Well, I have um, repeated the story of the first time you got the Uke Pro Sensei, and I hope I got it close to correct. A little closer, yeah. Richard. Closer, Richard. Closer. I'm, I'm going deaf. Closer. Sorry. Thank you for telling me. I, I was saying, would you mind reiterating the story about the first time you Uke Pro Sensei? That was, that was one I always Uke Pro Sensei? Yeah. The first time he called you out. Okay, old story again, but it makes you happy. So I'm there for a while, I don't know, six months, I don't know. And I know we're going to, uh, psychically, I, I know we're going to have a relationship, but so far nothing's happening, right? And anyway, so uh, I know he's kind of great. <laughs> and I see him throw people around, and it was like, Sort of unbelievable, but you know it's true. But there's that question. And so he comes out one morning, and we're all kneeling around the mat. And he looks at me, and he sticks his arm at me, and he says, come grab my arm. Come and get me. I'm up like a shot. I'm in very good shape. Uh, I got a lot of muscle at the time. I can move. And I move in on him. He's right there in front of me, and I move in on that arm. And suddenly, I don't know where I'm at. I'm in a different realm. I'm not in the dojo anymore. I'm in a different realm. Uh, and I'm going through this space. And it kind of felt rubbery, because as I enter this space, it kind of felt like it was compressing me, like rubber. And then suddenly, I'm being kicked out of this space. And I hit the mat and everybody starts laughing because my mouth is open. I'm like, ah, what was that? And uh, then I noticed he was standing to my right and I felt a little tingle on my forehead. I think he touched me with one finger. I saw him do that to some other people, just touch them, you know, touch him. And I felt a little tingle, so I think he touched me, but I'm not sure. And my feeling at the time was, what the hell was that? And it was different than anything else. With other people, it would be like, oh, that guy's fast. He threw me. He's fast. Oh, that guy's strong. He got me. Oh, that guy tricked me. Uh, this was, what the hell was that? It was a whole different world. Yeah, so that was my first go at it, oh, sensei. <laughs> and I knew, by the way, oh, he moved to the, to the, my right. And I knew if when he was standing in front of me, if next time I came up at him, I moved to the right, that he would have been to the left. I don't know how I knew that, but I knew that. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was an interesting experience. 
had you already moved into Aikido by then or were you still doing the other arts? Aikido full time? Yeah. Uh, I might, I might have, I was probably still doing the other arts a bit. I just, Aikido just fascinated me more and more. I don't remember exactly what day I yeah, yeah. stopped the other art. Well, I'd stay with, I mean, and anyone else, please feel free. Uh, I'm just kind of filling in here a little bit, but I, you know, I'd stay with the, what it was that you saw, what it was that you thought was going on that wasn't happening. <laughs> he he was, please. Yeah, he, he was, I would say he was coming from some place. I just had the feeling that it wasn't just a uh, physical capability, uh, but he was coming from a different dimension, I would call it now, uh, and operating from a different realm, a different world. And I was very interested in what the hell is that realm? What is that world? Uh, so that was my question for him later. I didn't say, show me your Nikyo. Everybody's doing Nikyo. Uh, where are you coming from and how'd you get there? And it was my line of questioning with, with, with him. And apparently wasn't asked too much about that. So he was, oh, you're interested. Come talk to me anytime. Uh, that was the beginning. You know, and in that way you say, it's, it seems to me like he would have welcomed questions from people, but if everyone thought you weren't supposed to ask questions, or I don't know why. Uh, nobody you'd did. have to ask the Japanese guys, uh, maybe Wada, yeah. uh, maybe uh, uh, Lauren, uh, but I think there's something Japanesey where you don't ask questions. But ask those guys. I'm not into Japanese culture to that degree. Um, but he welcomed them, and I took advantage. <laughs> I think a lot of people are also afraid of them. So, uh, he had a lot of, I don't know what to say, power, a lot of something. And I think a lot of people were leery of that. But again, it's part of the universe. I wanted to get more into it, you know. So how did you get on talking to uh, Sensei, given that you didn't really Japanese when you first arrived. And he spoke fairly arcane Japanese, I understand. I'm sorry, did you catch it? Uh, Could you say again? I almost caught it. How did you get on actually uh, discussing these things with O Sensei? Because he was uh, I, quite um, difficult I, to talk to, I believe, in terms of the language he used and so on. Okay, I lucked out. Uh, uh, a buddy of mine became a buddy of mine, Eddie Hagihara from New York. He had been brought up in Japan when he was a child in southern Japan, which is where Osensei was from, and had learned his Japanese from his grandparents mainly. And uh, so, uh, so they were speaking the older southern Japanese, so I think they had a better sense of some of his words than even the Tokyo Japanese. Uh, so he was my interpreter, good. I also, uh, which I'd be hard pressed to prove to the Westerner, but I had a, a, a feeling for a sense. It's like I, and often I understood him, not the Japanese, but I understood what he was saying. I don't know how to explain that. I just, just, just. <laughs> Uh, and then after Eddie left, a couple days after he left, another Nisei guy comes in who also uh, could understand his more Southern Japanese, old man Japanese language. And he was there. Uh, that was Henry Kono. And he was there and was another in interpreter plus some of the Japanese who uh, wanted to practice their in English. A couple of guys were interested in authentic philosophy and now and then they'd be around. So that's it. You 
want us to pay anything? Bob, um, Steve here from Melbourne. Um, Please. Um, reflecting a bit more on some of your other influences, I understand that you had an association with the uh, Esalen Institute for some time, and uh, yeah. as a as a as a mental health uh, practitioner myself, um, I was interested in some of the work that people in those early days, uh, such as Fritz Perls and Gregory Bateson were doing. Um, could you comment a little bit about your association with the Esalen people and, and uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, when I started to teach Aikido, I, uh, I thought a lot of people won't train year in and year out. So I wanted to present more directly some of the essence of what I thought, uh, you uh -huh. know, more energy awareness, energy flow. Uh, I was heavy into meditation at the time. And uh, so I wanted to get a lot of that across. So I would teach uh, classes just on things like that. Uh -huh. uh, and so Esalen heard about it. Uh, let's see. There was a well-known psychologist professor from uh, the University of California, Davis. And uh, he, he liked my work and he, he would attend my workshops. And he mentioned to some of the hierarchy of Esalen about my work and they invited me and I did some, uh, a private group in San Francisco and there was an Esalen um, office group there. And I did uh -huh. private lessons with them. They liked the work and they mentioned me to Esalen and Esalen invited me down and they liked my work. So I was there for, I don't know, over, over 10 years doing uh, work right. monthly. It was good yep. times then because a lot of, uh, a lot of things were going on. You mentioned some of the names there were, uh, I won't remember the names, but there were some good names there. Uh, Ida Rolf was there, Rolfing. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, D Diana, you were you were you were hanging out when I was going there. You came with me sometimes. What were some of the names? That's where you guys met, right? Yeah, yeah. Diane, Diana. Yes, that is where we met. Give me some names of top names who are there besides Alan, me. Alan Watts. Alan Watts was there. Yeah. Yeah. No, but you were the star. Ah, thank you. I, was there. I drew. I drew pretty big then. Yeah. Give me more names, Diane. Um. Come on, there's a lot of psychologists. The the, the, the uh, therapy. The. What you used to call the fish man, Stan Groff. Uh, oh yeah, the fish man. <laughs> Come on, he used to talk to uh, play with the play with the uh, the not the steels the. Uh, he played with some fish. What the hell? Oh, dolphins, maybe. Uh, uh, um, right, the dolphin guy. Um, yeah, the fish man. What's his name? Uh, I used to call him the fish man. Stan Groff is not the guy. Stan. Huh? Stan. One more time, Richard. Stan Groff. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. No, but Stan wasn't the fish man. Stan Groff was into drugs and psychology. Okay. But he was there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, all right. Was was it Maslow there, Diane? Was it Maslow hanging around, or had he finished? You're no help, Diane. Get off the line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just busy trying to think of who you're thinking of. Um, uh, you know, th those were those were amazing days, and and and. The, uh, coming closer. Yeah. 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 You know, it wasn't so much who else was there, it was what you were sharing was so far beyond what everybody else was doing, in my opinion, of course. Yeah. Um, well, they were, uh, thank you. Lily, they, John, John Lilly. Uh, John Lilly was the fish man, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Fritz Pearls, Fritz Pearls was big time there. Yeah. So when I first went, they said, oh, you're doing moving gestalt or something. I didn't know what gestalt was. So I had to yeah. ask, them, what the hell is gestalt? Because I was doing an aspect that the Schultz could understand, but coming from a whole different place. Yeah. Uh, anyway, a lot of big names, good times there. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that. Mm. Now, am I too loud? I just turned my volume up. 
Uh, that's much better, Richard. All right, good. Thank you. And so we did a variety of work there. Diane will remember. Uh, so we did a lot of energy awareness, uh, a lot of different psychic things, uh, trying to get them to uh, uh, <laughs> see energy, sense energy, look at people and pick up past lives, uh, uh, basic meditation stuff, because that was new. They weren't into meditation yet. They were still coming in off this psychology line. And they hadn't yeah. made that shift over to uh, what we call it, spiritual things. Okay. Hmm. The workshop, the first workshop I, whoops, I'm muted. The first workshop I attended was called Energy Awareness for Spiritual Development. If Sounds only, good. <laughs> the only time you ever used the word spiritual in a workshop write up. <laughs> it got me. Yeah. yeah. So, also, yeah. I think what, what we used to call, what still called centering and energy awareness. Now, the term mindfulness has become so popular. We lost it, Diane. Say again. Oh, mindfulness. Okay. Now, mindfulness. Yeah. Uh, so, mindfulness is just a new word for stuff we used to do all the time anyway. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm telling some Aikido people, say, God, we have to attract more people. Well, let's ride their coattails, say, uh, mindfulness and movement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that was where um, I came into the thing. Bob had been teaching down at Esla, and they opened up this class in the city at the Unitarian Church. We didn't have maps. We didn't have a picture of Osensei. Really? We didn't have maps? We didn't have yeah. We didn't <laughs> You know, we just came in and hung out and did some Aikido. And it didn't have any of the Japanophile stuff going on that later people got into. So to me, that was very additive. It had nothing to do with just being in harmony with the universe. It had nothing to do with knowing Japanese words or, or copying Japanese customs. And, and mind you, I went to every teacher we came through. Closer, Richard. Closer. Hmm? I miss it, Bob. Who's up? Louder, Richard. Louder. Oh, really? I thought I was. I thought I had fixed that. The uh, plane is going over. <laughs> oh, okay. At any rate, anybody else want to know anything in particular, or, or got anything you want to talk about? Oh, there I go. My mic turned itself down. I don't know why it's doing that. It anyway, knows you. it knows you well. <laughs> well, you want to say anything about what what you felt like your um, mission was when you came back from Japan? Because if I may just say, um, one of the other things that really impressed me about Bob uh, was his commitment to the art in the sense that, um, you know, he could have just taken it over. But he brought the other guys in and he treated them as equals, even though I don't believe they were uh, either by rank or by understanding. But he brought them in and he did another thing that I thought was really interesting. He didn't, uh, they didn't charge huge Don fees uh, additional to the Japanese fees. They didn't put that stuff on. And so Bob said, you know, look, if we build up a big body of money there, we're going to fight over it. So let's just get what we need and keep it simple. He never tried to take over. He never. He did, he did the most beautiful thing of gathering a community that I've, I've ever seen in a way. And, and the really, even though, um, you know, it frustrated me because uh, I was so much more drawn to what Bob was doing than any of the other guys. And I studied with everyone. Uh, it was just curious to me the way it went. And my concern, and when I heard the uh, channeling of Osensei, Osensei's concern, that, and Bob said it, I think, best when he said, Aikido is not a jitsu, but I think that's the way so many people practice it. And so that's why I'm, you know, doing everything I can in the time that we have to just help Bob transmit what he brought us, because to me it was so special. And like I said, it, it, it 
I didn't run a narrow path. I trained many arts and I trained with virtually every Aikido teacher that came through the area. Was there a question? <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I was asking you what, what you felt your mission was in, in when I watched that, it seemed so unique to me compared to everyone else's style. Yeah. I, I don't know. When I first really started studying stuff, I was doing it for my development. I, I never in a certain way trained to be a teacher, not really. But as I became better at what I was doing, uh, people would ask me, you know, hey, would you teach me to meditate? And I'd say, I'm not a teacher, you know, something I do with me. Uh, but then this began to happen more and more and more. So I finally had to take that job on or accept that responsibility. Uh, so I guess I wasn't out to impress people uh, or to make a bunch of money, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, uh, it was just something that I felt was there and belonged to everybody. It was, it was, you know, I just helped people realize there was something there and that they had access to it, learn a few things of the trade, but they had access to more. And I guess that became a mission. Okay. Thank you. This would be it's, my, it's Mike talking. Um, just in that last session, Bob, sorry, there was a lot of extraneous sound coming through to me as well as Bob's voice. I could hear Bob's voice well enough, but there was a lot of other odd sound coming through. I don't know whether anyone else experienced the same thing. No? Nope. No, it was okay with me, Mike, in, in Melbourne. Okay. Bob, I've got a question. It's Chris Thorson up in the Northwest. I just recently got a, a request to um, do a session on Aikido and death and dying. There's a, a big retirement community here on this island. So everybody's looking at death. Uh, so I'm just wondering what what your sense has been about Aikido and dying and, and even preparation for death. I think it's coming too close. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I, I, for, for me, uh, through my meditation, I realized that I wasn't who I thought I was. I wasn't the body, for example, uh, where you'd experience yourself separate from the body uh, so at that time the fear of death changed considerably because I knew the body would die but I still existed I could still experience and be for lack of words me maybe a better level of me but me I'd still be uh, retain some nadoishness uh, I think the unknown scares a lot of people, uh, you know, because it's just going to be one big black hole, nothing. Uh, will I never be able to think again or sense again and stuff? So I think there's a lot of not knowing that scares people. Um, so all the all these stories you read about about somebody dying for a while and seeing light at the end of the tunnel and even starting to see some friends and relatives waiting there saying, hey, welcome. Uh, that's basically true. Uh, I still, I've always had a relationship with dead people. It came out of nowhere. And I still keep some of that uh, where I can communicate with people who have crossed over, like Henry Cono check in with them now and then, uh, see how they're doing, their view on things. Uh, uh, one thing to tell the old people who are hurting is when they pass over, the physical pain is gone. I hear that from a lot of folks who have crossed over. Thank God it doesn't hurt anymore. Uh, <laughs> 
So that's a plus. Uh, yeah, I, I think if they could get a better sense of, of what the other side, uh, that is a, a, a good deal. Uh, if they're screwy or if they're too thick, they sometimes don't even catch that. They, 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 don't, they don't even cross over. They stay too heavy and they rebirth back. And I think of those people as being a little thick. Uh, you want to take advantage of this crossover. It gives you a chance. It gives you a chance to. Um, go over some of your past, make some corrections, and then later if you want to rebirth, uh, you have a better sense of things. So I, I think people who, who don't experience that and want to come back too fast are dumb. Uh, so I would take advantage of the crossover and uh, uh, develop. Uh, uh, I tracked uh, uh, Nicky Scoggins, those of you know Nicky, he's an Aikido guy, and he passed. And he was always into acting. And he, he still wants to come back and be a great actor. But what he's doing there, uh, I haven't checked in lately, but quite a period, he was developing himself and he was getting finer and brighter and finer and brighter and just getting a better sense of stuff. So when he comes back, he's going to come back with much more of this inner sense uh, to help him be a better actor than he ever had. That's good work. Uh, so he's, he's getting ready, he's practicing to come back and do his mission, which is be a great actor. Uh, so to take advantage of the other side, uh, it's a nice resting time for some people. It's a growing time for anybody who wants to be there and be open to how it works. Uh, so I don't know how to get this across to the old people on your island, uh, but there's a lot of books that have been written about uh, uh, what goes on on the other side. So I don't know if that would help for them to, to, to read these books. Um, Um, they could understand a little bit maybe of how the dark works there might be a lot of for some people a lot of darkness but if they don't freak out the darkness is just an easy downtime let's call it and you go through that and there's always some new light so it's a new so it's a way of traveling a lot of people around the dark, they, they get freaky. Uh, so if they could understand the dark is not their enemy, it's not a bad guy. It's, it's in the universe, it's there, and, and you want to use it, you want to be okay with it. It helps them hit the other side better. Uh, that's what you can do. Do something with that. Thank you. And since they spent 50 of our years on that side, just trying to get those beings to keep developing and moving along. It wasn't easy, even at that level, they're not the sharpest tools in the shed, as we say. Uh, so it depends on, on the inherent sense of a person. I think if, if you have made a touch on your truer self, so there's I, ego, me, eh, easy. Who, who am I really? Who am I really? Eh? Uh, if my body was gone, who am I? <laughs> uh, anything to, to backtrack yourself. Everybody right where you're at, there's a self there, probably wrapped up with the I a bit, but as you easy the I, self, easy the I, self. You begin to touch this finer level of you that has a lot of memory of things. Right? Uh, it was in touching that that I realized reincarnation existed 
because in touching a better level of myself, I realized I, I had lived before and could remember, sort of re-experience a bit, previous lives. And that was kicky. That was fun. I used to teach at it at Slid now and then. <coughs> um, mm. And uh, so where am I going with this? Uh, that if people realize that they have a finer self and when they cross over, they can still continue training, tracking the finer self and get finer than fine. So since they tried to teach them how to do that, I don't know if he had great success. <laughs> I think after 50 years, he got a lot of bored and bored with it all and moved on again. <laughs> so I don't know if he'll be coming back. I don't think so. The direction I'd like to suggest, hang on. Bring this up again, see if I can hold it here. Um, Bob, I don't know if this is even a, a reasonable question or a fair question, but you know what I wonder is what your wishes are in terms of what you leave, what I, I say we do with what you left. I always told Bob I, I probably would have been his heir, except that he'll live longer than I do. So for those of us who are still gonna be here, what would you like to see? Yeah. I'm a little bit of the mind that they're gonna do what they're gonna do. Uh, and to leave with a bunch of expectations and stuff, I, I don't think I wanna do that. Uh, uh, I hope you catch on further to who you really are and how the universe works. That'd be nice. Uh, but I'm not going to go crazy over it. Uh, or what I say is, I'll be back. Meaning, this is a long drawn out journey for mankind. Uh, so I, I, I don't want to have great expectations. Uh, do with it what you can. Do the best you can. Sorry. No, that was helpful. Was it? Okay. Sounds a little maybe uncaring or something, but. <laughs> I think, well, let me check my volume here so you can hear my dogs better. Uh, I think that your, those words were really helpful in terms of each of us becoming who we were more or learn, understanding ourselves and understanding the universe more. That's good, I appreciate that. Okay. Now, Richard? Yes. Shoot your dog. <laughs> I'll shoot myself first, but you know how that is. <laughs> uh, um, let's see the Aikido, okay. Aikido. How I would like to see Aikido is that we practice in relationship to how the universe works. If you have a tight eye, you're controlling the techniques. Easy the eye refers to who are you really? Easy, return back to a finer level of yourself. Easy, who am I? And as that eye gets a little clearer, certain things become a little more obvious, like, oh, there is balance, for example, or, or there is maybe a sense of harmony, okay? Uh, so that if we... You're good, you're good. Okay. Uh, so if we were to practice with a sense of easy the eye, so uh, basic harmony can begin to show, left and right. See, I could always do left side, and then we do right side, or vice versa. We allow both sides. Well, in a lot of martial arts, that's rare. Usually you're a right-handed fighter, okay? Uh, but we do both sides. Why? To, to facilitate the balance so the eye can, through the balance, become a better eye. See, we do a lot of balance, but I don't think we do enough, my, my fault too, uh, 
uh, uh, not stressing it enough in class, of, okay, now who are you? We have much better balance. Now, who are you at this level? Okay. And then we continue. The balance levels get better left and right. Okay, back to, now at that level of balance, who are you? What's your sense of yourself? Okay. Uh, then we continue. We get a little bit bigger. Okay, now it's all receptive and it's all positive. Okay, and that's not me. I, I do I do positive. It's I easy and let receptive and let positive. Okay. Uh, why? Because again, those are two forces, and if we let two forces, this sense of the self can get better. Yeah. And it's like that, and more and more and more and more. So since they talks a lot about two, talks about parents. Uh in our advertisement for the uh, uh, CYO, I think he said something about, I forgot what they wrote, uh, but uh, you know, you're the child of these parents. Uh, and so parents in this case is just a, a big sense of left and right, or a big sense of receptive positive, or a big sense of he, she, she, he, okay. And anytime you get balanced, you can get a better sense of yourself, better sense of yourself, better sense of the harmony. Okay. So I'd like to, uh, uh, would like to see the Aikido continue a little stronger in those lines, as opposed to, I got to get better at getting you. Hell, go do any other martial art. They, they do that. What makes us different? So if we're doing, Aikido, like other martial arts are doing there, we're not doing Aikido. We're just doing another thing. So, it should have a little different flavor. Uh, don't know if that came across well. Well, if I may, I don't and. want to stop anyone else if they have a question or anything, but I would just say, great, so what is it that that is unique about Aikido? What is the essence of what we should be noticing, paying attention to besides twisting wrists? <laughs> then in there, there should be a personal development or a personal awareness of who you really are. Easy the eye. <laughs> it's a finer sense. What's your sense of things? It's Mike. Mike. And also, does that expand to include a better understanding of your partner or your uke? Yeah, let's see where to go with that. Uh, that would be, of course, about to see if there's any particulars. Uh, yeah, they're coming in with energy. And in the, because you're more squared away in the realm, the world, situation you're in, uh, that balance, that squared awayness should begin to happen more naturally. Well, since they tried to simplify it at one time, he said, when they step in, you step back. If they step back, you step in. Well, that wasn't an I do this. That, that was, this is, this is how, how the law works that's going back, this moves in. If this moves in, this goes back. So of course that is going to include uke. So it's just a little bit bigger picture. So I do my first personal left, right balance, whatever, what, whatever. And then as it broadens out a bit, then of course the world I'm in is part of this and the harmony is in that world also. That includes Okay. Yeah. Uh, in today's class, and I may stress when I, when I go to New Zealand uh, a bit, is this a uh, little more emphasis on how to be a proper uke. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to get people more familiar with the positive receptives of the system. Uh, so I'm positive and now it's changing 
and you're starting to take it over, I should fully be receptive. Okay, I think there's a bit of a disharmony in some way people train. Uh, I come in positive, it shifts, okay, they're getting my arm, and they go, no, I don't want to hear what you have to say. I'm going to block you out. But it's time to be receptive. It's time to be positive. It's time to be receptive. I want to get that understanding of Uke's role, R-O-L-E, a little bit clearer. I think uh, we should take advantage of the law of balance more in our training. And I, from what I see, uh, there's a lot of bizarre shit going on with Uke's. They, they, they don't know how to uke. They, they have strange ideas about uke Like, no, you got to force me. Uh, but we should also be there to feel that, to be part of that harmony of positive, receptive, receptive, positive. So anyway, I'll, I'll do some Quite likely I'll do some work on that because it's been coming up a lot late, lately. Well, I, I for one, Bob, would, would appreciate that, being able to, uh, to experience that process a little more when we're all in New Zealand with you. So, yeah. We're going to head towards wrapping it up, but certainly want to encourage anyone if they want it ask or say anything as we as we move towards closure <laughs> i was gonna uh, ask again bob we're defined as a martial art and, and that's fine but for the people out there outside of aikido martial art means fighting that's what it means because all the other martial arts to varying degrees are basically looking at fighting and uh, well, my thought is that we're not a fighting art. Are we fighters? Because you, you used that term earlier in the, in the conversation. I was just curious, and I just wondered how you thought about it. it seems like you can be. If it's time to fight, you're going to be fully there as a fighter. All right. A lot of people learn fighting things, but they don't have the guts for it. They're not fully there. So a lot of stuff they learn is not very effective. Uh, fully there is part of it. A friend of mine did a, way back when, radio interview. Uh, he was an Aikido. And uh, so the calls were coming in. And there were a lot of calls from people who didn't know martial arts, but in a confrontation on the street, they kept their cool and it worked out. Somebody else called who had studied martial arts and he screwed up. It didn't work out for him. Uh, so people were catching that there's a certain way of being where you may not need to throw punches. So there's that aspect of it too. Is that, did I? Yeah, no, that was good. That was good. Here, here's one I use. I sometimes get invited to go to a jujitsu convention or something. And uh, sometimes I get a chance to say uh, uh, that we're a bit different, what we're studying. Uh, we're dealing with energies that create anger and lash out and stuff. Uh, and I usually bring up something like, it's not right that you beat up on your wives. They're martial artists, but they get pissed. They, they hit their wives. And when I mention that, the ladies in the audience go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see a couple of guys go, oh, shit, do that. Uh, they can't control themselves. So what good that they can throw some punches? They can't control themselves. So that's what I stress. I don't say, I'll macho, macho with you. I point out things that they have trouble with and say, this is what we work on. Okay. And these days, martial arts, I don't know, I'm a little bit crazy, too. Uh, you want to be the best, but there's always somebody better. How long does the world champion stay the world champion? He gets beat the next year. So he's not the best anymore, you know? Uh, how far are you going to go with this? Uh, 
<laughs> or it seemed to me I would get more injuries training to be that way than anyone could inflict on me in an attack. <laughs> you really train, you get racked up. You know, you're breaking bones and shit, you know. So, so I get into a fight. He knocks me out, but I don't get any bones broken. Hey, that's better than training martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't compete with them. We do something different. I explain what we're doing. And if they want to use Aikido and include it in their martial arts repertoire, I say, well, that's cool. We'll teach you to be more centered. We'll teach you to be more aware. We'll teach you to harmonize a bit better. So you'll be a better fighter. So take what we have to offer. Uh, Jack Wada was watching some uh, very famous kicker and the guy was trying to lay out more like this and the students couldn't quite understand what he was talking about. Jack thought it was a brilliant layout. It was a beautiful piece of work. He was talking more like we would talk but to an audience they couldn't understand him because they were kickers and they couldn't <laughs> understand this guy's top of the line kicker but they couldn't understand where he was coming from. It wasn't kicking the kick. It was, it was something else. Uh, uh, somebody's been uh, posting some uh, comments from Bruce Lee. Yeah. Uh, some beautiful shit there. He sometimes explains some stuff better than no sense they did. <laughs> no sense they could wax poetically. Anyway. Uh, he, he said some good, good stuff. Really deep, insightful stuff. So. Whatever. Also, in common sense, I've known guys from every art to take on four attackers and drop them. Every art. If that helped, Jenny. <laughs> Judo guys, bang. Karate guys, bang. Aikido guys, bang. <laughs> Who's better? Who gives a shit? <laughs> if I'm really a judo man, I don't care if you think your art is better. I love judo. I'm going to continue with judo. But it seems then, sorry, to me that in trying to sell the art to get to get new new students, new members to spread the word, we've got to package it differently in terms of of what we're what we're advertising and marketing, because for non Aikido people, they still have these pictures of you know if it's a martial artist, it's Bruce Lee, it's you know it's well, they won't they won't come in Aikido anyway, if that's what they really believe. Well, I guess that's true. They're going to go to mixed martial arts or yep. whatever. They're not going to come to Aikido. They're going to walk in once, look, and walk out. Come on. What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> you got to sell what you're selling. And if they're interested in that, they'll go, oh, and they'll stay. Or you try to talk martial arts to these 20-year-olds. They just want to go out and wrestle around and stuff. They're not going to stay with you. They won't even sign up. They won't even watch a full class. <laughs> Don't you know that? But I know they're, excuse me. Say what, Richard? I, I know there is a lot of interest, um, certainly in building up the dojo, because a lot of us made a living off it, or if you could call it a living. But, but, um, a lot. <laughs> but I think there's also the, the um, uh, I don't know what I want to call it, wish or something that, that somehow we could unlock the magic of what he, when he said it's medicine for a sick world. I think the spirit of harmony seems so critical. Of course, it's so 
divisive here in the states uh, at this at this time. You know that just it's like people can't talk to each other if they see things differently. And I think somewhere in the Aikido training, there's something for that, but I'm not sure how we translate it into the world or give the gift to the world. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, what, one thing uh, right now doesn't seem, I'm not speaking for the whole world, but from what I see around, it's not a high time for Aikido. There was a time uh, Richard, you remember Turk Street, uh, Diane remembers uh, Mountain View, where we'd have three, four, five people watching a class, and a couple of them would sign up. And this happened week after week after week. I haven't seen five people watch a class since forever. <laughs> and to get one person to sign up is exciting these days. Holy shit, I had a sign up last week. Oh, it's not a high time for Aikido. What to do about it? I don't know. <laughs> Back to uh, ride the uh, the hearness. What's hearness? Uh, mindfulness. Oh, we're mindfulness on the move. <laughs> Pick up the mindfulness, people. <laughs> it's not a high time for Aikido right now, for whatever reason. Well, we're about. 75 minutes in and there's no reason we have to quit or continue but i'm thinking if you're all ready let's go ahead and wrap it up unless there's any last thoughts or comments please danny here can you hear me danny, Look about it, danny. danny we can hear you yeah well the, the thing about growing the dojo and that I, I first and foremost um for me, it's accepting how things are here and now and being grateful for the people that do come in the dojo and continue to train. And uh, like everyone else, I'd love to see the dojo build up, but I, I have a sense uh, of what Shihan's saying. It's not the time. You don't hang your washing out when it's pissing with rain, <laughs> kind of thing, you know. The timing's not right. And... Like you guys, I can remember lots of people coming in the dojo and checking it out, joining up. Some would, some wouldn't. And um, it's just not so easy right now. And I think we need to, you know, if we can find the right language that um, touches people, then we'll get them in the dojo. It's, it's getting that message to them is the key, I think. Yeah, and, and to... Do the best you can in what you're teaching, improve your teaching capability, uh, learn shortcuts so they can learn better, uh, and do that when there's two students, which is a bitch. But yeah. do that. See, I always remember the story about Osensei. There's an early morning class, and Osensei would go, and there'd be one kid. And Osensei, better man than I, Gunga Den, would stay and train with that one kid. Can you imagine this master training with an eight-year-old? One-on-one. -on -one. Holy shit, what was he doing? Because I'm hard-pressed to do that. I dragged the kid to the coffee shop with me. <laughs> so when I walk into a dojo and there's two people, I go, okay, here we go. Now, now I've got to realize I'm training me. With these people yeah and hang in there it's not easy thank you for that and um certainly looking forward to the visit yeah uh, we'll make your bed up soon <laughs> looking forward to seeing you let me thank you bob so much for spending this time with us and uh well, thank you for asking. I want to thank all of you for coming and joining us, but I really want to extend the special thanks to Kenny who did the heavy lifting and, uh, you know, drove down in the rain and set up the technical. So thanks, everyone. Maybe we'll do this again if you'd like. We'll see you soon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Gia. Thank yeah, thanks Bye. very much. See you soon. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Gia. Bye. 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 -bye. Oh, only way, but you don't.
<laughs> Thanks again. See you all next time. Bye bye. Hey, Kenny, there you are. Hey, man. Yes, so everybody, so everybody should know he's gonna he's recorded the the data. So yeah. thank you so much.